that's a great competition. I love it. If only for the consternation it's causing in houses all over the country. <laughs> Actually, Bill and Jackie were just having a bit of, they were going. Mm, I could see Bill could going, see, what would we blow <laughs> up? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. I would have and loads of his stuff to blow up. <laughs> I saw a in his eye, I think he's a few. Yeah. If she can find it, he has a stash somewhere. Speaking of the golden couple, uh, apprentice stars, very <laughs> business people, of course, entrepreneurs, Bill Cullen and Jackie Lavin, have been through the mill rather publicly in the last two years with their Renault Ireland franchise going into receivership in uh, 2012. And then, of course, uh, Mockers Hotel, which I think it's fair to say was Jackie's baby. Mm -hmm. No question about it, was uh, appointed a receiver in 2013. But despite all of this, Jackie and Bill have come back fighting as they have recently opened up a brand new car dealership on the Nace Road. And they join us now this morning to tell us all about getting back on their feet. Bill and Jackie, you are very welcome as Thank always. Thank you. It's great to be back on the couch. Now, yeah. people are currently sitting there going, you know, we read all about it. It was very public. Was it accurate what people read in the press? Was it as, was it as bad for you as, as it seemed? Or, you know, did you just... Take it all in your stride, Jackie. Has it been no, horrible for you? I don't think you take something like that in your stride. It's uh, it's your whole life's business, uh, particularly Bill's. He's been 55 years in the motor business. So it's it's a whole uh, lifetime's work that you build up over a period of time. And uh, obviously you start from small beginnings and then you, you know, we, I mean, we got fairly big. We had a fairly big business, I think, uh, you know, most people will know. Uh, I think what, what happened was, uh, or what was reported in the press was quite accurate in a sense, uh, because um, when it actually all happened, we we didn't speak about it for um, a year really because we didn't want to just fill up airspace just for the sake of it to be honest and it had happened to so many other people that we weren't the only ones it was happening all around the place I mean it was domino effect all over the whole the whole country as everybody knows so um, when when we started then to look at well the positive side and what we can do and how we can get up and move and get on with it again uh, then we decided to speak out and um, it's amazing uh, uh, how many people have contacted us since then uh, there's been huge support around the country i think everybody likes to see people getting up again and going again and um, but it's not it's not that easy and it's not easy for most people i understand that i think you're, you're right i, I mean, everybody loves uh, you know somebody who uh, a comeback kid so to speak but did you get much begrudgery bill or no. did you get any? I don't. I didn't get any. No, we actually no. didn't. Didn't. We didn't actually didn't. Yeah. But did it hurt? That's well. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I'm no, I, we yeah. actually didn't. Were you kind of expecting a bit of it? Um, no. no the, we the never look at things like that, Mark. No, you yeah. wouldn't. No. The We're here to do the best we can. We're here to live our lives and grow in it and help other people grow, and that's what we do. Did it hurt you personally, though? Did of you take it, did. it as a huge personal mm. failure? Oh no. No. Oh no. I didn't take it as a personal failure. I could blame myself for doing things I shouldn't have done, yeah. which was give the banks everything we had and sign and pay personal guarantees that I never thought it'd ever come to match, but it did. And that certainly hurt. The bigger thing then was uh, the death of my sister and brother. Yeah, Bill's brother died. Well, you've had the most awful <laughs> yeah. time, and I can see it's so raw for you now. Yeah, I think Bill's brother died at, uh, i just give you a minute there. His brother died uh, uh, just literally a week after the business was taken. Um, uh, from serious, obviously from serious stress. He just had a heart attack at home one evening and it's Bill's uh, youngest brother. Uh, he was only 54 at the time and he left a widow and two lovely girls. Well, that will put money and material goods. That put it into perspective, yeah. to be Absolutely. honest. Yeah, yeah that, that put it into the perspective. The stress yeah. on him was just too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he just couldn't take it. And he was going to inherit the uh, dealership he was running for me out in, uh, out in Swords. Out in Airside. And this dealership was huge. It, it sold I thousands of well. cars. I yeah. pass it, it almost yeah, three it days It sold thousands of yeah. cars. And he was a great it's success. An and a lovely guy. A oh, super guy. And that's what yeah. killed him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Bill, how did you survive the stress? Um, I, don't, I don't worry about things. You know, I'm, I have your health. Once you have your health, it's the main thing. And I have <laughs> <laughs> a force of nature there beside you. Uh, Bill, Bill, I have to ask you, there were a lot of people. I, and this is all, I mean, to a certain extent, you've lived a lot of your life in the newspapers and in yes, the media. Yes, we have. Yeah. Yeah. People will think that they know a bit about you. And they'll also have a, a wrong impression. They'll think you were worth hundreds of millions. And they'll also think, Ash, they must have, they must have had stuff salted away. Yes, stashed, stashed away. You know, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's a big difference. Yeah. A big difference between Bill and Jackie going bang and, say, Ordinary uh, Joe Soap going bang. And I can understand that thinking. I can understand that. But, but it's not the case, actually. But the it? truth of the matter is, is that we actually put everything into the business. Uh, Bill's uh, modus operandi, I think, throughout his business life was never to make money for himself to hold, if you know what I mean. So it was always f about the business. Grow, grow, grow. Yeah. And I think, but yeah. I think that's the same with most business people, to be honest. Nobody is ever going to take money and put it aside to the detriment of their business. If their business needs it, they're going to put it in. Yeah. And it's every about the entrepreneur, it's about the deal, it's yeah, about the project. But every, yeah. every entrepreneur in the country will know that. The last thing you want to do is to stash away money at the, at the, 
at the at the expense of your business and when the the, the the crunch came if you like which was if you if you know over over a period of years from really 2007 onwards and this this kind of happened in 2012 to us so it was almost at the end if you like we're almost out the other end but all the money had been put in and all the properties had been put in as extra security so for the bank because they kept going yes yeah, and yeah. they kept demanding more well, and more and more market that was invented it and expanding it yeah i didn't want to be you know racking up money and say how much have i got how much have i got much yeah you wanted you to grow you don't yes. work for money yeah. you work for your business yes. and our business was expanding we were getting into other business aside from the motor industry and so on so that's and we all got caught in, the, in what happened bang so mm. you've picked yourself up dusted yourself down and you're mm. going again Bill. yes yes we've opened a lovely little garage on the, the nice road opposite brooks thomas if you know where that is it's at the canal end of the nice road and we've got a lovely place i've got two or three of the lads that worked with me before it's a small operation now but you know we want to grow that too but it's and a new brand it's, it's a, a new brand yeah. with uh, sanyong which you have to hear of now because we have mm. some of the best Jeeps in it's the Korean, country. Yes. It's a mm. Korean product which is coming after Hyundai and, and Kia. So they know how to make cars and this is a new one coming in and it has fantastic specifications and it's at a great price. We so actually have the ad that. actually which is um, er, er, cause, <laughs> causing some eyebrows to be raised. Can we play the ad actually when we have it because it is quite funny. The radio ad. Yeah. A two litre turbo diesel engine, Bluetooth, heated seats, a spacious interior, five year warranty and more pulling power than Beyonce on a night out. Bill. <laughs> I think that sense had, of humour kind of we had an argument, we had an argument down in, with, the, with the guys who were coming up with the ads and we had other things in it so we had to take that you had a certain other in. person in it yes. who decided to remove herself <laughs> were you in it yes. oh yeah they had me in it I said no and way what were you supposed to be doing in a Jackie no, I was supposed to be no, to she Beyonce was so you supposed to be Beyonce to no no as well, but, well. I said absolutely no way <laughs> I, was, um, I was watching uh, Reeling in the Years last night after the news <laughs> and uh, I can't remember which year it was but there was a man from the SIMI was on oh. talking about the uh, the decrease in car sales and well, well I think it was probably in the late 80s early yeah probably in the late 70s early 80s when we were going through 81 it collapsed you know. yeah collapsed and I was just thinking that in terms of the car business how many times have you been through this before Bill because it's well, waxed and waned a few times hasn't it well I started off in the 50s and there was nothing happening uh, the 60s then thanks to Charlie Hockey and all the support he gave to the industry it all came up so the 60s became very well we all started Mm -hmm. we really remake ourselves. Uh, the 70s were fine around the world, except in Ireland, 73, 74, 75, 76. I think it was 76 was the year they were doing yeah. that. Yeah. Then you got into the 80s and it just stopped. 81 to 86 in the motor industry was the lowest ever. And even though things were bad for the past couple of years, it didn't get worse than it had been in the, in the 80s. So in one sense, you've seen all this before. So yeah, you've, you've seen it worse. It, which means yeah. that you know how to come out of it. No, but I never had the kind of uh, money situations then than I had yeah. you know, now than I had then. I mean, the fact was, I mean, we were, you were working with maybe three quarters, half a million back in the 80s. This time now, to get the same business up and running, you need 10 or 20 million. Okay? There's one dealer here at the moment would have uh, used car stocks worth about 25, 30 million. Jeez. You know, so that's, that's where it can go to. So, and that says, that's why you're putting your money back in all the time. I started at the time uh, with 30 grand. That 30 grand would be worth about a million today. Bill, what would you, you know. say to somebody who's, who's just hanging on for dear life at the moment, money-wise? I mean, you've been through it, you've come out the yeah. other side, you're starting again, yeah. and you've done it and gotten through the other side, but for people are watching who can't see light on the other side, what would you say? You have to, you, you'll find the light, there's a few things you have to do, and the first thing of all is fitness. And that's your health is your wealth. Exercise. Your health is your wealth, and I do a half an hour every morning. Every morning, I haven't done it all my life. What do you do, do you jog or? I have I only have a little bathroom, private bathroom, so it's the best thing a couple can have to keep together. Here, here. <laughs> and I have a skipping Separate rope. Separate bathroom. I have, skipping two, rope. I have a skipping rope. And I have two five kilometre, kilometres uh, mm. box. Oh, kilograms. Kilograms. Box yeah. Kilogram. Yeah. Right. Um, I do the plank. Do you do the plank? I plank, yeah. Plank, yeah. Well, yes. How, yeah. how long do you plank? I am a plank, Bill. How long, how long do you plank for? <laughs> well, I do up to four minutes. You can plank at four minutes? Well, she said that the best part of it is only two, but I stay up there for four. <laughs> Right. But we do, we, it's, we do a, plank. it's a type of plank. And we do our stretching. And the big thing about the, the, the skipping, your legs are the most important thing in longevity and living a life. As soon as the legs go, as my granny said, you're Donald Duck. Well, yeah. So fitness number down. one for people at home. So my mother wouldn't give us the money to Mental run the bush. Fitness. You had to run the bush. You could run from where we lived in Summerhill up to Phoenix Park, out to Dolly Mount, but you can run faster than any bus, so off you go. And that was the, that's the best thing you can do. Second thing is what you put in your body. Mm. And what you put in your body has to, we all know what we shouldn't put in our body, cigarettes, drink, drugs and any of that stuff, boom, and get the right kind of food into it. Mm. Uh, Granny always said the most important thing was expectation. 
expect to live to be 100 healthily, and then that's a goal you have with you every day. So you exercise. Well, it's better to travel and hope than arrive. <laughs> that's yeah, for you know, sure. In some case. Jackie, but it does, it does help your mental strength. Can, I, can I ask you a question? Because, mm. And you've been very vocal about this, about the banks, and I, mm -hmm. and, and I don't want you to go on a rant about the banks, because uh, bank bashing actually has become a kind of a... Yeah. It's become tired it's at this become stage. Very tired. I think it's because people don't actually realise what, what's going on, and they really don't want to know, and they don't need to know really if they're not in it. I think no, they're fed up with it. They're too worried about putting a meal on the true. table. True. Yeah. But what true. have you learned about? I mean, I, I, look, they, look, we have an insolvency service which allows them the veto, which is it's, it's ridiculous. Oh, it's, yeah. Bullshit. I just but think. Anyway, it, yeah. just, what have you learned from your dealings with them? And, and I have learned how unf how unfair and how unjust the whole system is, uh, the whole banking system. Uh, how that 100 percent of the um, of the law is on their side. Uh, that and it, that's also garnered by the fact that most people can't afford to get a legal team together. You know, to to actually to, to balance to balance it out. Uh, there's a few people who are doing their best as as uh, lay litigants in the forecourts, and quite frankly, it's a joke. They're being just kicked around the place. You know, I mean. They don't know the law. They're not legal people, but they're doing their best and they're helping people. They're doing their best. But uh, that's that's how in unequal it is. You can't, as a business person or as a as an ex-business person, you can't get any legal aid. The, so there, the, there's actually nowhere to turn, and that's why you know an awful lot of people go down under it uh, because there isn't anywhere that, that there's no buoyancy mm -hmm. there to say, well, okay, you can go to a certain agency mm -hmm. and they will help you and they'll bring you through it. There is no such thing. There's a, a thing called examinership in this country, but it costs a fortune to do it and you can't afford. Sure. What kept you so going? My mental strength. And where do you get that from? I, she's I, from Kerry. I Kerry. Actually, <laughs> I she's, actually, from, she's from the kingdom of okay. Kerry. No, no, actually, it's, it, it is just mental strength. And in a sense, but too, is I suppose... But that just who you are? Can yeah, you it that? is. Yeah. It, no, it's, it's who, who you are, are but you yeah. can as well. You can, you can learn it and you can... Um, you can, I suppose you can garner it in, I suppose when, when things are down, that's when you really yeah. get to know, uh, you know what you're made of. And, you, and, and, and it's about confidence, it's about yes. energy, yeah. it's about uh, working very hard, you know me, I get up early. But it's in another sense, I was kind lot. of, uh, a li that little bit once removed from, from the business yeah. in another sense, and it, it was that I could see from the outside, uh, you know, how unjust the whole mm -hmm. thing was, whereas when you're in the maelstrom, of well, your business of going down. That sense of injustice can it's actually right. fire you up. It, can it you does. Go, it can make you go, it does. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let you We're not going win. to lie down. Yeah. I'm certainly not going to well, lie listen, down. Listen, there was never any doubt that you were going to get back up. Uh, it, and I, well said. Uh, anybody Thank who you. knows you would, wouldn't have doubted that for a second. Um, it was just so, a matter of when. Well, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 there. and probably be even more successful this time around. But you will, will, we don't doubt you for a second. We wish you all the very best. And we will see you back on the coach again soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Love the Thank you, Sinead. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Love the shoes, by the way. There's holes in them, There's holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> now, after the break, text to see your thoughts on Bill and Jackie. Five through on two on. Bill <laughs> yeah. uh, after the break, we're going to be seeing how gardener Pora Corkin got on when he paid a visit to one of our viewers' gardens to help out with his lawn problems.